Hi guys, my name is Raichu Plays, and in today's video I'm taking a tour around one of your zoos that you've sent in to me. So today I've been kindly sent the Ottawa Zoo, which is from a Canadian creator called Gunters Gaming. So he kindly sent that over to me off the back of a post I popped through. So let's jump straight into it. So I'm just going to start off by going down this path. So I haven't really got the route as such, I'm just going to kind of see, see what happens and see where we go with this. Okay, so already the details are amazing. Love this. Gives you that proper like North American Canadian kind of style. Okay, let's have a look over here. So Looney Bloons, Keepsakes Corner. Wow, okay. Okay, that is so good how you've got that sorted. I've given these a couple of goes actually and I've not actually had much luck in actually making the souvenir shops work. But as you can see here, this is working. You've got the, the lady there and stuff. You've got the posters on the wall as well. Pretty cool detail so far, I like that. I just love these little figures that they've put in for the modular souvenir shops. They're so cool. She's happy to work here, she keeps waving at us. Yeah, very nicely themed, I like that. It's got all the um, Canadian style animals as well, all of the animals that you would find in Canada. Okay, so that was Keep Keepsake's Corner. So that's obviously the entrance kind of gift shop for the zoo or the exit kind of one. Okay, so I see something over here, so Beaver Creek. So let's go and have a look at the Beaver Creek and then we'll hop over elsewhere. I love these shades. These canopies are really, really cool. Oh, not this one. Oh, I love that kite, huh? I need to see her. I've never seen that in the menu. Oh, that is so cool. That's kind of like the ones that they give to the polar bears at Yorkshire Wildlife Park and they literally just jump on them all day long. Okay, this is really clever. I love this. So you guys know <laughs> my thoughts and opinions on the donation boxes. I definitely think how to sight out of mind is the best thing, and these are hidden perfectly. I love that. Wow. What I want to do is I want to just have a look at a couple of the animals actually. So let's just hop into, just hop out of the camera. So these are the North American beavers. So I've not actually used these in any builds to be quite honest. I probably should start using them because they do look pretty cool. Them just sleeping on the edge, bless them. I'm sure there's one, oh yeah, there's one here, a lot of ones swimming around. Let's have a look at him. Wow, them animations are really, really cool. He's like got his paws tucked up at the front, swimming with his back legs. I don't actually think I've ever seen a beaver before. Just have a look at the details down here. Ooh. So you've got these as well under broken Himalaya pines. So many items that I've never actually used. And you've got the little... I'll click on it. But you've got the little underwater plant feeder as well. That's pretty cool. So that's nicely hidden actually. And it's deep enough. Every time I seem to use these, they always say feeder not deep enough. I don't know what, what I'm doing wrong, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. These walls as well, these walls are so cool. So these are, I presume, the 8 meter or 6 meter logs. Four meters, cool. Just clear these out as well, just don't want these going off whilst I'm going around. Oh, 
And we've got plenty of land area as well. Other enrichment as well, that's all sorted. What's this made out of here? Oh, they're flowers, okay. We've got the beaver pool enrichment item as well. That's cool. Right, okay, I'm not going to get sidetracked, so I'm going to jump straight back on the path where we were. I'm going to tour it properly because I will get very distracted. And I will end up just picking everything and going a little bit crazy. <laughs> just excited to tour, I guess. Okay, I just want to have a look at these education boards as well, because these are really, really cool. So I really, really like these. Yeah, they're really, really cool. Wow. Okay, that's cool. I do like that. That's a really good habitat. And I really, really love these kind of bees. Okay, so let's go and have a look. Ooh, more kind of education or information. I like this style because I see quite a lot of people using these. You know where they just kind of put the lines in just to make it look like there's writing from afar. I really think they're dead effective and dead cool. Okay, right, so I'm just going to go back up this way. So I missed the little path here to go down. So there's another one of them education balls there. Okay, so opposite the Beaver Creek. So we're going to the Mute Swans now. So these are part of the Eurasian Animal Pack, the most recent DLC. Oh my god, this is so cool. God, the foliage work in this is crazy. Put them there, look. Oh, well, I presume they're the parents at the back over there. I can't get over this foliage. And these walls as well, these like barrier walls are dead cool. So I am an absolute sucker for these kind of barriers where you've got like the path and then it drops a little bit behind. I absolutely love them in all zoos and on Planet Zoo as well. Okay, so the parents are just coming around actually. And I want to go and have a look in that building in the um, in the hide as well at some point. Let's just have a quick look at the um, the education. So again, using the... Uh, oh look, I've still got him. <laughs> highlighted behind the, the actual swan and again I, I absolutely love this this is so clever I've never actually thought to use this let me just see what is actually being used here okay so the new world sunshade copper base new world planter that's so clever and the African pot yeah we love innovation that's really really cool Okay, so let's go a little bit further down. Oh, there's a smaller education stand here. Keep clicking the, clicking the wrong button as well. So I presume this one, if it was a real life zoo, you'd have kind of like a, the name of all the swans, like Meet the Swans or something. So you'd have like Mom, Dad, and then the... Um, I don't actually know what, the, what a baby swan's called. Let's we'll call it a baby for now. It's probably not called a baby. I just can't get over this enclosure. Oh, the foliage work is crazy. It just blends into the background as well. Oh, we've got the little fruit spike enrichment there as well. It sticks as well. So the, and I always forget to use these, but they add so much detail. And also the reeds as well. So the reeds in this kind of habitat just adds so much detail. Oh, we've got one coming around here, a lot both of them. We've got quite a few actually. Right, okay. I'm not going to get too distracted by swans because we've got a whole tour to do. There's another one of these education boards as well. A lot of babies in there as well. Okay, so let's have a look around here. So I haven't actually got a plan. I did have a brief conversation with Gunter's game in as well. Uh, just to see if there was any kind of route he wanted me to take. Um, he said just pretty much go wherever and end up where at the end of the video I will end up. So I'm just going to kind of free rein it and just see how far I get. Not they're all chasing the geek because he's got the food. <laughs> Come on. They're definitely hungry. Just put the food down for them now.
Okay, so let's carry on. So I think, so I saw down here that was staff only. So we'll not go down there. Because technically we're a visitor at the moment. And these as well. I'm obsessed with these. Right, okay, so do I go down past Beaver Creek or do I go towards the food court and the Wolf Fire Watch? Let's go. I think we'll go this way because when I spoke to Gunter's Gaming, he did say to end up near the bison. So I think if I loop around this way, that one will work quite well. Okay, so Wolf Fire Watch. So these canopies as well, these are really, really cool. Let me just check, so are these in-game? No, they're not in-game ones, they're customs, obviously. They're really, really cool. I really, really like them. Okay, so let's have a look at the signage for the Wolf Firewatch. So I presume these letters are all... Wow. That must have taken ages to do all these. Gutter can. See, so many people use so many different items in creative ways. I know when I've been watching Sparrow as well, she does quite a lot of them. There was one where she did the headphones for the Fox Calls. Um, that was on one of the early episodes for the True North Sanctuary, where she did the fo Red Fox Habitat. Okay, so we've got the wolves here. Ooh, that is cool. It's got a nice little cave in there as well. I assume that's... Is the alpha? Let's try and find the alpha. Mm, I can't see the alpha just yet. I'm sure we'll come across them. But I love this. So these are the Oceania nettings, I believe. Yes, I really like them. They do the curved ones as well for them. They're really cool if you're building for like gorillas and stuff. Wow, the rock work here is crazy. So far in this, no habitat feels out of place. It all just feels like it blends straight into the scenery. Like it literally just kind of matches. So you kind of expect this if you're walking through like a national park or something. Got the wolves underneath you as well. I presume there's more, it's the wolves on the other side as well. Let's have a look at that. Yes, so they can access this part as well. Let's just have a look at the habitat as a whole. So I want to just kind of not zoom too far out so I don't want to. I don't know if they're playing or fighting, but they're having a good time. Okay, so we've got some hidden enrichment items. Okay, so that's the staff entrance. Let me just swap that out so I can do the free look one. I've got all the enrichments. So this is the bridge that we were stood on. And I presume, oh my god, you can actually go up here as well. But I feel like a kid in like a sweet shop, I just keep finding stuff. Oh. Catrice. Let's have a look in the cave, because the cave looks pretty cool. So this is their hard shelter. So this is, oh. Let me jump. <laughs> so Waylon, so he's in here. Fry me to death. Right, okay, so that's the alpha female. So Helm. Probably butchered that, but it's pretty cool. I really like that bridge. I like the um I presume these I think these are called struts underneath a bridge. I'm not sure. I did engineering in college, but <laughs> clearly they're not putting it to good use because I don't know what they are. Yeah. yeah, so this wolf habitat, I really, really like this. This is really, really cool. Like I say, it literally just blends straight in with... Like I know if this wasn't here, you wouldn't really know where the where the habitat ends, which is quite cool. Just blends straight in. Oh, they've just been fed. See if we can find. I don't know if there is an alpha male, if there's an alpha female. I always thought there was one of each, but let's see if we can find them. That's, that's that one that I butchered the name on. That's a baby. Yeah, it's, it's not him. I'll check this one. 
Mm -hmm. It's the same one again. Hmm, might just be an alpha female. There might be all her pups, to be fair. Right, okay. So we've had a look at that. So um, I would really want to go up that watchtower as well, because that looks really, really cool. So hopefully you can go up there. Yes, you can. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the education. Yes, these are cool. I love the attention to detail in this so far. And this around the donation bins as well. See, I think what would really, really make my life happy on Planet Zoo is if you could re completely reskin the donation bins or if they made items that you can pop them into. Because, like, Gunter's done here. These are obviously all... If we just take a closer look at those. Um, obviously, these are all kind of closer. Let's just get a little bit closer. Yeah, so these are all separate items, and then they're all bundled together in a group. Obviously, it's... Obviously, the only annoying thing about the donation bins is you can't remove this, which is a little bit annoying, but I guess it's it's there to show the guests that they need to donate there. Okay, so... Let's have a look up these stairs as well. So if we go... Should be able to walk up there. Oh, there we go. So you should be able to look around as well. Okay, that's a separate enclosure. I don't want to look over there yet because I don't want to spoil it just yet. <clears throat> right, okay, so we can have a proper outlook on the on the wolves as well. I love the layout of this, it feels so like um, so cozy. Little things like this I would never ever think to add into a zoo. Just tiny little details which add so much character. I know I can, I'm going to say this every time I see a new habitat, but I think this one so far is my favourite. I love this, what's all going on. And these canopies as well. I just I absolutely love these canopies. Um, yeah, that building there is separate, so we're not going to go over there just yet. We'll get to that part. So straight back into explore mode. So we'll continue the walk. More canopies. And I like how he's done these as well. So these are kind of like um, the typical kind of angle mesh or fencing that you'd see in any carnivore habitat. Okay, so which way from here? So do we go to the Arctic point? We're not gonna go to the bison, so we're gonna go to the Arctic point. So, we will go and have a look. Ooh, which path do I choose? Uh, let's go this way and loop around. So let's have a look at the fox grove. Okay, so this information plaque, that's really cool. So these are the arctic pieces, I presume. Yeah, the arctic pieces. I love them. They're pretty cool. I've made a couple of shops with them in one of my series. But we're not talking about my series in today's video because that's not what this is about. Yeah. Ooh, I like this wall. That is really cool. Without falling in. <laughs> okay, so I presume obviously you're not meant to stand up here, but I just wanted to get a quick look down here as well. So again, the detail down here is just crazy. That's really, really cool. And they've kind of got like the illusion of like a little hot wire around the top as well. Obviously I don't think red foxes can jump that high. But then these barriers as well, these are really really cool. What I'd also kind of imagine in, in real life as well, they'd probably put like little education boards on here or something. I think that would be really really cool. And I did see red foxes jumping around. But I've not seen one. That's that they. Let's have a look inside the actual habitat. 
see what we can find. Yeah, so this this is really cool. So this is the kind of style I like to build for like polar bears and stuff. I know it's not ideal for polar bears anymore, but this kind of dip so you can get as close as possible to the polar bears. So again, the foliage work in this is just amazing. They're very well hidden though, these foxes. I did see one on top of the hill, or the hill on. So, let me just pause. So we've got a male and a female. So she's the alpha female. So she wears the trousers in this enclosure. So let's, this is really cool. I love that. It's, it's, just, it's just really, really simple things like this that I never think to do, but it's so effective. Because obviously, I know people have strong opinions about the <laughs> the in-game water pipe. I'm with you on that one. It's not not the knife. Oh my god, there's loads in here. Oh, so we've got plenty of black ones and plenty of ginger foxes as well, or red foxes. Sorry. Wow, this is cool. So this off-stage area. Let's just pop through. So the detail you've put into that, oh, even that whiteboard and the light switch. This is how I would imagine the back of a the backstage area of a zoo would look. Maybe you've got the little Planet Zoo <laughs> one inside from the, I believe it's the Oceania pack. Yeah, Oceania. Yeah, these are cool. I've got the enrichment items on here. So you'd imagine kind of the keeper coming in. He needs to replace any of the enrichment items he can. He's got all the produce over here, so he's got all the all the vegetables and anything he needs, and I presume he'd prepare everything here. Um I was I presume there is a proper staff. There'll be a staff room somewhere. Uh, not staff room, sorry, keep a hut. But this is really, really cool. I love this. And these as well. I know I keep coming back to this, but I'm just, I am obsessed with this. I love, just love this kind of, I definitely need to take some inspiration and build something for like a polar bear like this. Just something so you can have the path like really close and the polar bear can't actually jump or something. Let's have a look at that as a whole. Love this. You know, I'm an absolute fan for a habitat without any barriers in the way and I think this ticks it off. All of them have ticked it off really well so far to be fair because none of them have had really high barriers apart from the back and I love that. And again it just blends straight into the background as well. Really really cool. Love that. Okay so hop back into explore mode. So, let's go around. I think there was wolverines down here. Am I right? Uh, no, the skunk. It's my bad. Not got my glasses on. We'll blame that. Uh, oh, that's one not. So you can kind of get dead close to the fence. There's also these viewing galleries as well, so these are pretty cool. So again, this is another animal I've not actually used in any of my zoos. But this tree as the centerpiece of this enclosure is really, really cool. I love that. And the way these leaves sit over the top of that log as well. Love that. Let me just go back. I just want to kind of picture it from this kind of angle. Wow. And these canopies as well. But I really need to up my canopy game. I really don't use canopies and I feel like I need to because I always see the fun... Oh, the fans, sorry. The guests walking around fanning themselves. <laughs> and obviously that means they're too hot, so I probably need to start using them. I know there's a couple of in-game ones. I've downloaded one off the workshop for when I did like an African grasslands test playthrough. Oh my lord, they're both asleep here. Oh. Oh. I think all of these, obviously apart from the, the red fox, because they are in the UK as well, they just live on the side of the road. Um, you don't tend to get much in the UK in rural areas, it's more kind of city areas I believe. 
I think where I live now, I've never actually seen a red fox. We don't really have many animals, to be quite honest. We have grass snakes in one of the fields, kind of like woodland, wetland areas down the road. But that's about it. That's the only kind of interesting animal. And we have a pheasant that lives practically on the road, hooting and hollering like all the time. This as well, I love doing this. So I love having the keeper huts and having the window looking out onto the enclosure. So I've done that in one of my one of my episodes coming up, which you will see shortly. And then we've got a little staff room as well. He is watching he's really interested in that blank tally. Should sit down and watch it with him. He does seem very entertained by nothing. This is the first time I've actually like been through the staff buildings and had a look in them properly. There's a guitar there as well. It's just a typical little staff room. So same again with the red foxes. So you've got all the, we're going to call it the stock. So it is technically stock. So you've got all the stuff that you would need to feed them, all their enrichment, watering cans, kind of anything that you would need in here, I guess. Um, I presume this is, is this their meat? I presume that's like a fridge storing their meat. And again, I don't really know the diet of a skunk, but Ooh, these are cool. Right, okay, so let's go back to the path. I know I said I'm not going to get distracted, and I've already, already done that many times. But I really, really like this style of building as well. It kind of gives me like a, like a barn style. But that is really, really cool. I don't know, I don't think they're allowed to go in there, are they? They got... Oh, they've probably got a... I think they'll probably have like a burrow somewhere, I guess. Hidden? Or maybe they don't need any hard shelter. But it's that lot, that's a burrow. Let's have a look, see if there's any in the... Um... Oh, they're all in here, look. All the little skunks skunking out. I love these. I feel like these are probably the best thing that Planet Zoo's added, to be quite honest. I think they're really, really cool. Hmm. Yes, I love that one. That one is cool. I really like the kind of piece as well. I'm going to say that so many times, I can, say, <laughs> I can see it coming already. Right, okay, so back. Let's just pop back into the walk around mode. So, do I carry on? Let's carry on going this way. So I think there's some stuff down here I can see as well. Education speaker hidden there as well. Okay, so we're going to the Arctic Point, I believe that says. Let's have a look when we get there. I love these path, like these curbs as well. These are really, really cool. Yes, so Arctic Point. So, right from here. So if we. Let's follow it around this way. There's been so much like, effort and detail put into this. So I'm going to loop around here. The only thing is I don't want to get lost. I don't think I will get lost, but <laughs> I don't want to go too far into the zoo and end up kind of looping around a lot. Okay, so we've got some reindeers here. So quick pit stop at the education points. So I'll wait for this lady to come out of the way. Okay, so most of these are using the Arctic pack, which is pretty cool. So you've got the little reindeer statue as well. I need to stop clicking on stuff as well. I'm a serial clicker. These fences are really, really cool. These proper go in this theme as well. This like Arctic tundra kind of theme. Right, okay, so oh, look, there's a little baby one. I'm going to say this so many times, but I don't think I've ever seen a reindeer in my life. I've seen normal deer, because there's um, a place called Woolerton Hall in like the next city along from us, and they have deers. I don't know what, I think they're just like, um, just kind of like a European deer. I don't think they're anything fancy as such, but they have kind of free roaming. I know quite a lot of estates and stuff in the UK have that. Um, there's another one as well, Cork Abbey. I went to that around Halloween time to walk through the tunnel, so they had all like spooky decorations and stuff. 
they, they had deers, but they weren't free roaming. They were in like a little, not a little, it was a massive pen to be quite honest. Okay, so shelter's cool as well. I really, really like that. So again, it's another one of them habitats that literally, if you just kind of like had a walk through, you wouldn't know where it kind of ends because the trees just carry on going. But I really like that one. Let's go down next. There's a couple swimming in the water that I want to see. This is a cool idea as well. So this gives me very much like Christmas kind of kind of vibes. Uh, oh, stand on the bin, you get in trouble for that. I'll stand on the bench though. So from here as well, if you turn around, you could also see the, the red fox. So you can see one there. He's not red, but he's still a fox. Right, so let's go and see them ones in the water, because I really want to see those. There he is, look. There's a little baby one as well swimming, but I think he's got out now. That was me getting distracted by standing on the bin. He's probably over there, he's run back into his little off stage area. Um, what I'm going to do, oh look at the smoke coming out of that. That is cool. I'm going to pop over there actually. I want to have a look inside the off show area. So let's just have a quick look at this habitat. That is so cool. God, it must have took you so long to build the zoo. It's literally all the all the fine little details, look. Well, it's these details that make a zoo like a really, really good zoo. Right, let's have a look in the off show area. Wow, so it's kind of like um, it's like an old kind of stone barn style. Zoom, these are like hay so they can kind of come in and eat from this kind of like little trough thing. Might not be the case, so I do apologise if I got that wrong. Um, I think it is because I presume this is the, the stock of hay. And then you've got kind of lockers. These lockers are really cool as well. And another whiteboard. So you've got like a little graph here as well. It's probably, if we were looking at it in real life, that'd be like how many times one's eaten or something in, or growth, well, no, it wouldn't be growth charge because it wouldn't shrink. Probably be the amount it eats or something. Um, little notepads for keepers. A little keeper hut as well. Got a little sign up. These are really cool, these are. Are these an in-game item or is that? Oh, there it is. See, I've never seen them. I feel like there's so many stones unturned <laughs> when I'm playing Planet Zoo. If that's zero, uh, out this door, sorry. No. Right, let's go back through. Right, so I'm going to rejoin onto the path. So are these the standard reindeers, or are these the... Is it piebald? I'm not actually sure. No, brown and white. Um, I've never actually used these before. There's so many animals that I've not, not used, but I'm... Like I said, I'm trying to <laughs> try to work out which ones I haven't used in zoos and stuff. But I'm going to make like a master list and just kind of tick them off per per zoo. So I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. So let's have a look down here, see what we've got. So I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm zooming in <laughs> impatient. <laughs> so let's go up here and see. Okay, so I think these are these Arctic foxes or Arctic wolf. Arctic Fox. So, education boards. These are cool. I like these. I need to know if these... Are these like a workshop item or are these made? So many pieces. But that is really, really cool. I love these. Oh, so you use like... It's not a bad idea, actually. Using like different styles of letter. That is cool. Let's see if we can see any arctic foxes. Again, I've got my favourite style of donation bin covers. Let's see one there, look. 
just, just run off behind that little... It looks like they've just been fed, so hopefully they'll come down. Oh, he's back. No, oh, he's gone again. Definitely playing hide and seek with us. And just see him through the bush there. Right, let's go up a little bit. Okay. One second. More, more education. Love this. Right, here's one. Is that the same one that was playing, kind of hiding behind the bush? And I think that was him there, wasn't it? Wow, this enclosure's cool. I like this. Let's see, um, is there any more viewing points? Let's just have a look from the sky. Oh, not from the ground, I meant the sky. Don't want to... Yeah, so it looks like there's a path up there. So we'll get around to that in a minute. Obviously, I don't want to get too ahead, ahead of myself, sorry. Right, so the offshore area. So they've got that same, I love this. <laughs> and I've said so many times, but I absolutely love this. When the keeper hut looks out onto the habitat. Okay, so you've got like these little holding pens. I really like these. These are really, really cool. Got the kind of holes as well, so you can kind of train and interact with them. Oh, these are so cute. Done that again. Getting click happy. Oh, I wish we had Arctic foxes in the UK. I oh, know it probably wouldn't be any good for the the ecosystem, so probably throw some off balance. But again, so we've got these. I think these are fridges. I think these are like big storage fridges. So these store like big quantities of meat. Because to me that's what it looks like. So you've kind of got like an intake or an outtake. Kind of like an aircon to cool it down. Um, I presume the keeper would kind of come in and sign off what they've taken out and what they haven't. And obviously they can put the meat in the, in the buckets as well. That's a really, really cool detail. I really, really like that. <clears throat> so let's just see. No, let's just... Uh... Okay, so I'm going to go back to the path, so I don't want to um, keep skipping over, but we're going to have a look at the enclosure as well while we're here. Let's think what that was for a sec then. That's one of their enrichment toys. Okay, I read. Oh, Did you make that box? This? He's definitely happy about that. These are really, really cool. I've done these in one of my series, future series, um, but I didn't really spend too much time on them. I just made them a pretty cool little enclosure, but Gunter has gone absolutely to town with this enclosure and it is really, really cool. I was hoping he'd like jump <laughs> over the over the little waterfall. Look even these as well, these are dead cute. They remind me of the um, if anyone plays Pokemon, but they remind me of the Alolan Vulpix. And I know I'm sure it's based off a of fox anyway, so it'd make perfect sense for the Alolan Vulpix to be an Arctic fox, I presume. I don't know if that's how it works, but that makes more sense in my head than anything. It's probably what they've done, to be fair, because they always do a lot of regional things. Okay, so we're going to go up to that path on the top, just so I can look down and see what's kind of happening. Um, but why is he walking like that? Oh. There's nobody here. <laughs> He definitely looks like he wants trouble. <laughs> I've never seen these walk in. Do they all walk like that? I'm actually going to be keeping an eye out for security guards now because <laughs> they're really funny. 
Ooh, so Arctic Foxes, right, so let's pop back into the walk around. Okay, so instantly, wow. This is really, really cool. I love these, how you've got the little flags and utilize these. You've integrated the conservation board and the education board as well. So can we go and go up there as well? Well, I want to go around this little path. So let's go around here. I don't want to miss too much though. But then again, I think that does lead. Yeah, we'll hop over there in a sec. Okay, so, do we see any Arctic foxes here? Uh, Arctic wolf, sorry, I said fox and I do apologize. More education. I like that waterfall. So this habitat is really kind of like a, a mountainside. Um, I don't see any. So I'm probably being very, very blind. I wonder if they can... Oh, they've got an indoor area here as well. Wow. The scenery. I love this map with the big massive mountains in the background as well. It gives off that proper Canadian style. Right, okay. Let's go down here. Because I think this is the indoor area. But I'm not 100% sure, so let's just have a quick little look. Oh, we'll just cut through the walls. Yes, so this is the backstage area. Oh, here they are, look. So as well, I don't know if... Arctic Wolves and the Hudson Bay Wolf are the same. So they've got the Hudson Bay Wolf at Artist Zoo in Amsterdam, and they look pretty much the same. They've got two, but I don't know if it is the same one, because I know, obviously, Hudson Bay is... I think it's either just outside the Arctic Circle or it is in the Arctic Circle. Um, but other than that, I'm not really sure what the difference is. Because the ones that artists are also white. So they're all having a little snooze, the little tails twitching as well. So they've got a little pup as well. Oh, I've got another one as well, he's just coming in. This enclosure is massive, I love this. We've got one here as well. Sun rack. I think that's how you say that. Really like this pool. This pool is really, really cool. It's like a little creek kind of thing. Oh, and there's a viewing dome as well. Let's go. That? Wow, this would be cool if this was in a zoo and you could go in this, I would 100% go in this because this would be really, really cool. Like you can just kind of imagine them walking past. It's cool, I love that. There's one here as well. So I've only recently started using these. I think I've only actually used them once to be quite honest. Or if I used them, no, I've used them once. I really like them. I know at the start I couldn't really get to grips with them, but I finally kind of figured it out and it's fairly easy once you, once you know how. I was literally on the struggle bus, so I didn't know what I was doing. And I just kind of gave up. Oh, I was getting there quick. Oh, I just missed them, but still really cool. I think they've just been fed as well, so hopefully... try and get, get the wolves going past. Okay. Right, what I want to do before I go anywhere else as well is I want to come over here because I want to go up this path. So let's go up this path because I think at the top of here there's like an overlook kind of thing. So I think there's also one here as well. So let's have a look down here. So yeah, so there's... Wow. 
There's little um, telescopes. And a few little shops up here as well. These telescopes are cool. I love these. Right, so let's get a, a look out to Nova. I love that, that's cool. This is a really cool little area. This would be the kind of area you'd find me sitting and chilling. <laughs> Away from the madness, nice and quiet, surrounded by trees. That's the kind of vibe I go for. The Arctic style as well. So everything's really well themed here. Obviously I know we're in the Arctic, the Arctic area, the Arctic point, sorry. Um, but I love how you've stuck with the art, everything art, like from the Arctic pack. Okay, so we're gonna go up the path here. <clears throat> okay, so I like these little bins as well, they're cool. Just the little leaf details on the side of the path as well. Uh, oh, okay, so there's actually an animal up here as well. So it is a good job we actually came up here and checked this out. Okay, what animal that is? The Wolverine. The Wild Warrior. So, yeah, so as you can see as well, these are also native to Canada. So obviously Canada starts kind of there. You don't actually realise how big Canada is, but I see that bit there is Hudson Bay. I think that's where most of the polar bear population live. Because there's me thinking polar bears live like up here, or they literally live kind of there. Which makes me think as well, if they did, <laughs> if they ever made the way, I don't think they would, but if they ever made the way to Scotland, they'd probably be okay in Scotland. Because it is absolutely Baltic in Scotland. Me and my friend went camping in May time. And it was three degrees at night time, and it was literally murder. It was horrible. <laughs> we had to go and buy like 13 tog blankets and stuff because it was just way too cold. Okay, so the wolverines. Oh, look at the little tails. Right, okay, I really want to go into this habitat and actually have a proper look around. Right, let's come outside and stuff a look from the outside. Ooh, this is cool. I love this because they're quite good climbers as well, Wolverines are. So when I've seen, I've only ever seen these ones at Dudley Zoo and they have a lot of climbing frames. So they're in one of the old, I think it's one of the old bear pits, but they have massive, massive climbing frames because they are quite good climbers. Oh, look at running around. Okay, they're all running around because they've just been fed. I mean, I would as well if I was a Wolverine, I'd be going mad if I was just being fed, to be quite honest. Okay, so we've got the enrichment up here, so they actually go up to these areas. I really like this climbing frame though. I like that route from one to the other. Is there any in, let's see if there's any in the borough. No, unfortunately no, none in the borough. Okay, so that's their hard shelter. So, so we've got kind of like the little backstage. And again, it's really, really cool. So I was just trying to work out what that path is. Or is that a path? That might be a path, actually. I had to really think, ooh. Probably got a bonus. Okay, so we've got the little stock areas as well. These are cool. So much detail has gone into like the backstage areas as well. Yes, this one is really cool. I do really, really like this one. And let me just check as well, because I don't think there's, there's no path. There's no path going off that way, so we're still on the right path. So let's just hop straight back into explore mode. Oh yeah, so this is the path. So I was on that path before. I see just saw the little Arctic wolf running through as well. So their buildings like their... Oh look, they're all running through. Like. The gang is out for dinner. I 
Oh, I really like this low visit, like this low viewing area. This is really cool. As well as well, I've never actually used. I don't know if you can link the camera from the borrow up to like a screen. I don't know. I've never actually tried that. But if anyone has, please let me know if it works. I feel like that would be cool to use. Okay, I'm gonna follow down this path. I don't know where it's gonna take me, but. Oh, oh, oh yeah, so this must be what I was looking at on the ceiling, the bottom of the path. Oh, so you can... Oh, wow, this is cool. I love stuff like this. Any zoo that has... Oh, this one's going in. You going in? Oh, damn. Oh, oh well. <laughs> Almost. Oh. Okay. Here he is, look. Oh, these are really cool. I never even knew these were an animal until not long ago. Really, really cool though. I think they're quite vicious though. I'm pretty sure in the wild they are quite, quite crazy. Right, okay, so back on to explore mode. Okay, so if we go back down, let's just follow the path back down. Just that. No, we'll walk it down. We'll have a look at the scene around the way down. So we can keep looking. So I feel like here you probably get quite a good view of the wolves as well if it's close enough to the edge. Oh, he's in a rush. So I've got a lot. So there's not much, not much visibility, but it is for the the wolf greens. It's not the, um, it's not the wolf habitat. So all these pine trees as well. That's so cool. And this fencing as well. I'm still, still obsessed with this fencing. These lights are cool as well. I like these. It's like modern, but with kind of like classic twist. I presume, as well, I presume these are functional lights. Yeah, they are, the new world ones. Light mode automatic. So that's something I've never done as well. I've never built in the dark, so I've never had to use lights. But I know there is some really, really cool lights in the game. Okay, so I'm just going to find where I am. Right, so we came to here, we came up that path. We walked down here to... Yes, so we've got the Arctic Foxes there, the Arctic Wolf, the Wolverines up there, the Wolverine building. So if we carry on going this way, yeah, so let's keep going down here. Okay, so I presume this is like a little staff, yeah this is a little staff access I presume. So that's the back of the reindeers, because I remember that smoke. And I remember saying that it was like a kind of arctic barn style. Yeah, there they are looking there. In the water, sorry, just over there. Okay, so if we carry on this way. Wow, these are cool. Right, so we've got to walk through these. We can't, we can't go faster through these. Wow, I love these. These are cool. Okay, so let's have a look what this is. What's in here? Alright, force table. Is it a restaurant? Yes. Oh, so this is a restaurant. Oh, this is cool. Oh my god, look at these. Sorry, let's jump over that to look at these. Are these in game items or are these custom? They are really cool. Oh my god, they're in game. Again, there's so many items I never use. I can literally smell this room, like, just vision being in this room and smelling the incense. It's got such a distinctive smell. This is a really cool restaurant. A skylight as well, using the modern glass pieces, I think. Let's see what it would look like if you actually sat at the window as well. 
vibes, absolute vibes. Is that, let's have a look at the outdoor seating as well. I presume we go, oh yeah, through the door. Wow, this would be cool as well. I can kind of picture, I know it's probably not very hygienic, but if there was kind of like a little exhibit or something with some kind of animal that's not too, too in your face, just one that kind of chills and just kind of um, walk by and have a look at people while they're sitting down and stuff, but not necessarily beg for food. Okay, so that's Ford's table. So that's the zoo's restaurant. So I love that, that's really, really cool. I really like this, these structures here. It's kind of like snapped woods. Kind of reminds me of like the bottom of a boat. I don't know if that's what it's meant to kind of emulate, but it just gives me like very much kind of like Viking kind of Arctic vibes. But yeah, they're really, really cool. Okay, so we're gonna carry on. Oh, what was that? We'll go around to that in a minute. There's something. Okay, so this is the side of the, the restaurant. So this is where we were just looking at the restaurant. So you can kind of sit out here and just kind of watch people go by. Good if you're a people watcher, you can kind of just sit, sit there. So I just want to check because when I spoke to Gunter, he did say there's a cool little path you can take. So what I might do I'm just going to check. I'm not going to pop it in now. I will edit this section out. But I just want to check. I presume this is the... Yeah, that's the little path. So we're going to come back and do that at the end. So I know where that is. I didn't go too far down, so I shouldn't need to, uh, to edit that on. It was a quick scan. Okay, so what have we got here? So are these the doll sheep? Something that called... Is it doll sheep? So the barrier for this is so cool. These guys absolutely love, these are like the Alpine Ibex, but they absolutely love rocks and stuff. So again, it's, it's another species. There's so many species, I think every species in this zoo, apart from the Arctic Fox and the Wolverine, so I haven't actually built for. Okay, so their education area. So more kind of education. There were quite a lot in their little herd. So that as well, I think that's a snow machine. Is that a snow machine? Cooler heater, oh yeah. So that's really cool. So that's kind of like a makeshift zoo. That's so cool. But just the vegetation in this is so good, I love it. I love how the enrichment items completely sunk into there as well. It's this pine tree. That's a really cool idea. I presume that's the heater, coolers and everything all in one. And then with some kind of special effect and using a couple of different different groups. But that's so creative, I like that. Okay, so can, oh, let's go around this way. I'm not gonna keep cutting corners, we're gonna go. We're gonna go the proper route, so again. So this, this kind of reminds me, so when I was at, that's really bad if I can't remember the zoo. I want to say Artist Zoo. They have these kind of like poles. And it was one for the parrots, I believe, the blue throated macaws or something. But they have like these kind of information towers. And they have like a little card machine where you tap your card to donate however much you want. Um, so it's, <laughs> I'm not saying it's risky, but uh, I'm a bit funny about just tapping my card anywhere. Well, I guess if you're using kind of like Apple Pay or something, you're pretty much covered, or Google Pay, whichever device you use. I like this, this is cool. I love how these have been incorporated as well. They're really, really cool. So much like traversable area as well, so I can see the, the rocks slanted there. But if these guys can't get up, they will just jump as well. So they probably, these ones here are probably too steep, so they probably can't jump up onto here. Um, but say for example like these ones here, they'd be able to like jump, 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 because that's what the Alpine Ibex do. Okay, so we're going over here, so we'll have a look at this enclosure here and then we'll see where we are. Because there's a couple of different ones around here. 
So I think I did see this animal whilst I was looking at the, <laughs> the education board. I tried to move the camera so I didn't spoil it for myself, but I believe in here is a cougar or a puma, whatever you call it, depending where you're from. I don't know why there's two different names for it, but I guess there's different names for all animals, to be quite honest. Okay, let's just go in. Let's just go above because it's making my eyes go a little bit funny. So we've got our little... So this is a really cool idea as well. So you can just see the, the in-game water pipe covered with like a water book kind of thing. So this here is really cool, this little cave. Which is kind of offset to the side. Sorry. Oh, there he is. Look. Wow, look at the little picture of that. That was really good timing. So again, I've never built for these before. But they're such cool creatures. And I know, I think in America they also call them mountain lions as well. And I can see it. It is oh, a lot. They're such friend shapes, but they're really not good friends. Reminds me of that meme where it's like, if not friend, why friend shaped? That is literally these guys, <laughs> when you look at that little picture as well. Um, oh my goodness, how'd you say that? Can I... Can I which... Yeah, I'm not going to try to say that, because I will get it very wrong. So, let's have a look at the habitat as a whole. So how many is there in here? Just got the one. Yeah, just the one in here, by the looks of it. So this, this is... Absolutely breathtaking. I love this. This is like the dream. This is like the perfect amount of foliage and these little steps as well. These are really, really cool. Reminds me of like a kind of mountain trail, like a hiking trail. When you find like them kind of like little steps and stuff. No, this is really, really cool. I love how you've played with terrain so much as well like it's built literally all on terrain to give that kind of like mountain feel and everything is literally done so perfectly like these steps look and I presume that's for um, staff traversable areas as well yeah so that'll probably help the staff with traversable areas right okay so let's just do a quick zoom out okay so we're still going this way that's good I just need to get my bearings on where we are. Okay, so they're the reindeer, so we've been... I said I wasn't going to get lost, but I'm a little bit lost. <laughs> oh yeah, so we came through this way. So there's the skunks here, there's foxes, wolves. We came down, we did the reindeers and we went up, over and around, all the way back down here. So the cougars. Okay, so we're going to follow down this path. Right, so the seal pavilion. We are absolutely going there. Right, so the restroom. Is that here or is that further down? Hey. I think that's here. So there must be some toilets. But these vending machines are cool. How the sun can into that. I have a very love-hate relationship with vending machines as well. When I first used them in one of my franchise zoos, literally every 10 minutes they were breaking or being vandalised, I put cameras next to them and it just, honestly it was hell, so I just never used them again. <laughs> I just used the actual paths. Right, okay, I'm excited to see some seals, so let's go and have a look at the seals. <laughs> One second, sorry I was delayed there. Having a sip of my cup of tea. Being a proper Brit and having a cup of tea. Oh lord. They're so cool. <clears throat> and I've never actually seen underneath these as well. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen them. So again, these education points. Obviously they're not actual, but obviously they are. We can think of them as education points. And this wall as well, Jesus Christ. The amount of detail you've put into this zoo is crazy. And even like these as well, these are like kind of like fisher nets. Fisherman nets, sorry. These 
to these screens. I'm not sure. It's probably because I've not got the image actually. But these would look really, really cool. Um, if I can get these working, I will pop a clip in. I feel like these would look really, really cool when they're all lit up as well. I'll drop Gunter a message and see if I can get the images and see or see which images he used for that. So again, this little—I presume these are, are these lights. That's just part of the. Oh, it's the anatomy of the seal. So it's like a little museum, really. It's so cool. I know for a fact if this was real, I would spend so many hours in here. I'd literally be sat like there. <laughs> Looking into the tank, watching him swim around. So cool. Right, let's carry on. Let's go up to the higher level. So I wonder if you can look down into the actual seals. Ooh, so we've got a little education point as well. She's selling, I presume, audio guides. There's just selling like. Audio guys, adoption packs, umbrellas. Pretty cool. Oh my god, yes, you can. Wow, this is so cool. I love this like multi elevation kind of thing. So, obviously, we were stood down there. We came down the stairs around here somewhere. We came down, down them stairs and then we looked underwater. And obviously, here you can look over water. Oh, no. So graceful. <laughs> Isn't that how they stop? They just kind of. Oh. Uh, he's coming out of that. <laughs> so entertaining. <laughs> There's a lot of videos I see where people like dub music over the top of that. And they're just like got some crazy music going on and they're just like bopping away. And then you've got just got him spinning around. <laughs> I'm so entertained by these, I love these. The little skylight as well, that's cool. So this is proper like aquatic style, I love this. This building is just amazing and we've got the aquatic fencing as well. And we've got some plants in here as well. Literally no stone has been left unturned in this zoo. I am so impressed. Okay, so let's have a look at Raccoon Corner. So again, I've never seen raccoons. I know they have them at Artists, but every time I've been, they've always been either in the little den or they've been in the off-show area. Wow, okay, this is cool. But I want to actually have a look in this enclosure because this, this is cool. Oh, it's a little baby one. Oh, What's that mum and... I don't know what a baby raccoon's called. I'd probably say it's like a cub or a pup or something. Oh, I like these as well. These climbing frames are really, really cool. These are amazing. I love these. I like how you've added the little wooden blocks on. I think they're the they're the Australian bits. Yeah. See, I'm getting to know my stuff. <laughs> oh yes, this is really, really cool. And then this this is their little hard shelter bit, I presume. Yes. Wow, okay, I love that. Right, so let's go back to where we were because I got way too distracted there. I wanted to jump straight into the enclosure. So we're gonna do like a kind of just walk around. I love these climbing frames. They just go so well with this enclosure. Like they can almost kind of blend in. So you've got like the sticks. I think they're the African African logs, I think. But they're literally the same colour as the trees in the background. And you've got a little raccoon picture as well popping over the top of the fence. Wow, this is cool. The barriers as well, these are cool. I like how you've got the glass as well and then the netting or mesh at the top. Okay, let's have a look. Oh my god, that is massive. 
For some reason, I'm absolutely petrified of these. I think if I saw one in real life, I'd probably cry. <laughs> They're really, really scary. Oh, what's his name? Jaron. Okay, so this is the moose. Okay. We're gonna go in there as well and actually look at the enclosure. So I didn't know that the female ones didn't have horns. Well, I guess it's the same as deers. Because with deers, female ones also don't have horns. Have I missed the... Have I missed the education point for this? I saw that one there. And we've got these as well. They might be one inside actually. Let's go have a look inside. And we've got this one as well. We've got a little thing here as well actually. Right, okay, so let's check out the building. It's so big, they're absolutely massive. Yes, I see something over there. That's what we're looking for. Moose Lodge. Wow. Right, straight in, let's have a look. Oh, this is really, really chill. I like this. These as well. I love these. This is cool. So this is kind of like what um, what I saw in Sparrow's video as well, using these as headsets. So she had these in the Red Fox habitat, and she had like 20 pairs, so you could pick them up and listen to 20 different calls, I think. But they're really, really cool. I love these planters as well. I love seeing planters inside, and I've got some exhibits as well, which we'll have a look at in a second. This angled viewing as well, that's really, really cool. It would be quite scary though if one was just stood there. So it'd probably be this tall. <laughs> so again, we've got more. So this could also be quite like a little interactive thing for kids as well. So they could kind of press the button, or even adults, I'd do this, and put headphones on and kind of listen to their calls or something. I think that's pretty cool. Got the little education board there as well. Um, you've got their main education here and some toilets as well. That's cool to have them in here. I like it when the toilets are kind of hidden because I don't think the building for the toilets is actually that good. So I think it's a lot better it being hidden. Okay, so this is the... I think it's the American Bullfrog. Yep. So the American Bullfrog. Looking as chill. Oh, there's another one there actually. There's quite a few actually. So there's two over there as well. Okay, let's carry on. Keep pressing the wrong button, so I keep going up. Do apologise. Okay, what have we got in here? So we've got the terrapins. I think there's one here. We do actually need to go down to see that. There he is, look. Bless him. Um, I only see one in here. Oh no, it's one there, not sorry. Hidden on the bottom. There's probably a couple around the back, but they're the only two that I can see at the minute. Let's do that. Okay, and then let's have a look at the final exhibit. Okay, so we've got the red-eyed tree frogs, so let's see if we can spot these guys. I think these are usually on the window. I always want that a lot. Oh, big yawn. Yes, this is cool. This is cool as well. So this kind of reminds me of something that you'd see kind of like a little native species in. So probably one that's, for example, if there's like a, a almost extinct animal in Canada, I would kind of imagine that to be in here and they're kind of like preserving it and doing certain conservation efforts and stuff to keep them. Let me just check. Okay, that's the cougar. So we've been there. So I think we need to carry on going down that way. So we've done the seal pavilion. Let's just have a look where we are. Just don't want to get too lost. Okay, so we've not done... Yeah, so we came down here. That's the, where the little vending machines are, the restroom. That's the cougar. Seal, skunks, 
Yep, so we're still going on the right path. So I'm going to pop my person about here. Because then we're just on the edge of the raccoons. Okay. So is that a grizzly bear? Oh my god, it is. Wow. And that kind of like lodge. And these this artwork as well, that's cool. Are they in-game items? Oh my god, they are etched glass. Wow, that is really cool. Alright, let's not get too distracted, let's have a look. <laughs> so I wonder if something new is being built here at some point. So we've got two, have we got two or have we got three? Two grizzly bears. I presume this was built in sandbox mode. So obviously habitat sizes and the welfare and stuff are key factors. Okay, so this is cool. So this is like, you can get so close to the animals. He's just playing with his ball as well, that's cool. So again, the foliage in this is just mental. I really want to go and have a look over in the backstage area as well. So let's just have a look at this from afar. So there's quite a lot of swimming area, well, I say quite a lot, there's a little bit of swimming area. I like this an area here with all the education stuff then. So I'm just going to have a look in the backstage area as well. So I love being nosy at the backstage areas. Ooh, decals, I love that. <clears throat> so this is Olivia, the bear. So she's just had a two second nap and she's off again. So I presume these are kind of like little holding pens if needed. Um, we've got ooh, this. I believe this is like a little weigh-in machine because I know they have these. They'll kind of use like some form of enrichment in real life zoos so and get the bear to fully stand on. So I know they have these at Yorkshire Wildlife as well. They make them stand on so they can weigh them and they've got like these little paw things where they've like custom built it so they can check the polar bear's paws inside Project Polar. Um, Again, if you haven't, if you're from the UK and you've not visited Yorkshire Wildlife Park yet, I highly recommend it. It is really, really cool. It's not. There's not an awful lot of animals. There's enough, but it's very much prioritising animal welfare over how many animals they have. So most of the animals have like absolutely massive enclosures, like the polar bears. I think was their enclosure was the largest outside of Canada until Jimmy's farm opened up their reserve. But it's still pretty massive. They've still got three at Project Polar 1 and quite a big enclosure over at Project 2, but the Project 2 polar bears have moved on to Jimmy's farm now uh, to keep their female occupied. Okay, so inside the grizzly bear. Wow, this is cool. I like this. So you see these quite a lot when it says like, how do I measure up to like certain animals and stuff so you can measure yourself. It's quite good for kids measure yourself next to next to the real size of like a grizzly bear a um, good photo opportunity as well so on here you'd have like facts about grizzly bears you've also got seats in here you could probably have like a talk as well a little statue as well so this could be like a little memorial for one that originally lived here or something this plant i've never used this plant before what is this plant called the twin flower i like that that's really cool I'm gonna have to say so much like inspiration of plants and stuff. So I feel like I just, I'm so repetitive sometimes with plants, I just kind of sink them into the ground and hope for the best. Okay, so onwards from the bear habitat. So I think this is, yes, the bisons. So is there anything? Right, okay, so I think this is the final one. So this is the one where Gunter told me to finish up at. Um, so this is the bison paddock. Yep, so the North American bisons. Let's have a look down there. Oh, there's one right, really, really close to the path. <clears throat> right, let's go down and see them. Wow. I love this. This is really, really cool. Is that a tent? 
I wonder what it is. Like a little camp pen. <laughs> That's cool. These are so cool. They're so unusual looking, but they're also really, really cool. Oh, they're a little bridge as well. We need to have a look at that. I presume these guys don't swim. Because they are they're all up in for for the bridge. So I presume that's uh, they're quite bulky there, so I don't I don't imagine why they would be able to swim. But again, this is another one of them habitats where it just blends in so nicely to the surrounding areas lot. So much detail. I wanted to have a look at this little <laughs> I love this, this is so cool. So this is almost like somebody set up camp. So I presume they can't... They should be able to climb up here actually. Yeah, they can because there's enrichment up here. And it's more of a slope, whereas this side's a bit more... A bit more harsh. Um, so this... Oh, so I wonder if this was like an old kind of minecart. Looking at that. So it does give me like that kind of minecart vibe. So I presume back in the day this is... Just making up stories here. Well, this is where the workers would stay and then they'd cross the river and go through the mines go in and mine what they needed to and then the bison kicked him out and said you're not mining here anymore this is my land now um okay so i presume this here this would kind of be like a little holding area i believe in this and obviously we've got the, the backstage Wow, I love this. I love how you've used the dry grass. I think that's what it's called, the dry grass. Uh, common salt water dry. Pretty much just dry grass. Um, but yeah, I love how you've used them as hay. They're really, really cool. Same again. All, all your backstage areas are really, really cool. I do really, really like these. So you've got everything neatly packed away. They're very tidy keepers here. Keep everything nice and nice and tidy. <laughs> and then the bisons can come straight in and go where they need to. Um, so I presume it's a natural yeah, natural barrier around here because obviously they can't climb. So we're quite safe with, with what we've got here. Yeah, so this this included I really really like the style of this. It's so cool. Even just all the little pieces, like, sticking out of the ground a lot. Just so much detail. Love that. Right, let's carry on the walk, because I believe we're near the end. So before we get to the end as well, I'm going to pop down to that path that I went down as well. I know you probably saw like a tiny little sneak peek, but I wanted to do more of a detailed one. Um, I know Gunn said it's, it's not required, but I wanted to do it because he's put time in and built that, so I want to go and explore that area as well. Okay, so another head education point here. And another one. So you can also see them, let me just come out of that. Okay, so this I presume is the staff area. So I think for this, I really want to look at it from more of a an angle. So this is really like modern and it's like modern but also old, <laughs> which is really cool. These building styles as well. Wow. So this is, I presume, the central hub. So obviously you've got like the vets, keeper huts, trade centers, workshops, quarantines, staff rooms. Should we see what's behind the door? Is there anything behind the door? Oh, yeah. So this is, I presume, a little electrical unit kind of thing. So he's going in. You're not going in. <laughs> pretty, pretty much it. But the dog. <laughs> oh dearie me, honestly. Some of the characters in this, they make such funny noises and just make absolutely crazy noises as well. Okay, so this... Oh, this is a North American beaver, so I was, I was on about the kayaks at the start. 
I was on about the how the Yorkshire Wildlife Park polar bears have kayaks in their closure. Okay, so what I want to do as well, I want to pop it back into explore mode. I want to go over that bridge. I'm such a good aren't I? I'm like, I want to go over the bridge. <laughs> I just want to do everything. Right, let's go this way. Okay, so these planters are really cool. Just so much detail in this zoo, I love it. So again, we've got the New World etched glass. So I think this is going to become something that I need to add in my zoo. Next time I do like a bear area, I'm going to have to add those. <laughs> so I feel like they're not being, being used and I'm wasting, wasting a really good piece not using those. I really like that. I don't know why, but this gives me like Jurassic Park vibes, kind of like a bunker. I don't know. It kind of reminds me of the... I don't know what film it was because I've not really enjoyed like the last two films that they've made. But they had, um, it was the one where they went in and there was all the lava pulling through and that dinosaur, the baryonyx, ghost fighter. And I remember that because the bat fell off my seat. It really, really scared me. I'm like the jumpiest person ever. <laughs> so something like that just, unless it absolutely rattled me. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, I don't know why I've not been a massive fan of the Jurassic World franchise. I definitely prefer Jurassic Park. The first Jurassic World was amazing. I absolutely loved it with the Indominus Rex. And then I really liked like, the first half of Jurassic World Falling Kingdom, I think it's called. Where they go back to the island, um, they try and rescue as many as they can. And then that poor, I think it was a Brachiosaurus, gets left behind and sadly, sadly chopped, unfortunately. Um, but then after that, when they go to that house, I just, it just didn't, I couldn't follow it. I didn't enjoy it. It was just a bit, a bit weird. And then I really didn't enjoy Dominion. I went to the cinema and I was just getting agitated and <laughs> I was like, I want to go home now. <laughs> but no, I'm, re I'm really bad to kind of get into films and TV shows. I think if something doesn't hook me in the first 10, 15 minutes, it's a very slim chance. I'm not going to sit and watch the whole thing. So it's literally got to, it's got to sell it, pretty much. And, like, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love Marvel films as well. But there's certain Marvel, Marvel films, sorry, that I just can't, I can't sit through them. I don't know why, but Star Wars, that's a different one. Nobody's allowed to say anything bad about Star Wars. <laughs> because I absolutely love Star Wars. Um, let's have a look down here, because I wanted to be nosy and just see what's actually behind this. Ooh. So we've got a little pump station and a little rhino bin. So what's these? Oh, so this is... Have we been in here? No, we've not been in. Oh my god, I've not been in here. Oh, so this is the swan. So I said I wanted to come in here when I was over there. So this is the... Show out. I'm obsessed with this enclosure. Everything just fits so nicely. So yeah, I really wanted to look in these, because these little boxes are really cool. I assume these are like little nesting boxes for them. They're really, really cool. I really like those. Wow, they're cool. We've got spare enrichment items as well. And then we've got a little keeper hut down there. Did I come out of this door? Yeah, I did. Right, so let's see where we are. Right, yeah, so that's where we came in. Um, this. What's this. Okay, we're just being really nosy now. But why not? Uh, okay, this is to get into the wolves. Yes, I do remember that. That's fine, I remember that. These pumps as well, these are really cool. Have they actually got a pump inside, or is it? Let's be super nosy and have a look. Whoa. I've got detail on the inside. <laughs> these are cool. I really like these. So this is like obviously the main pumping facility for for the zoo. So let's just have a look at it as a whole. So let's just do a quick overview on where we've actually been. So we start stuff here, as always. So we went down. We had a look in the gift shop. 
souvenir shop. And then we came over, we had a look at the North American Beaver. And then we went over to quite possibly one of my favorite enclosures, the Mute Swan. And then we went down to the Wolf Firewatch. So we went under here. We had a look down, obviously we went into the enclosure on a fly mode. And then we went up to the top of here as well. And then we went... Sorry. And then we went this way. So we had a look at the red foxes. And again, this enclosure is very, very cool. I love that. And I think... Yes, yeah, so we went to the skunks and then we went up to Arctic Point over here. But we didn't go there yet. We went to the reindeers first. So let's zoom out again because we're pretty much just doing the tour again. So we went to the reindeers. And then this was the Arctic Foxes, so obviously we went round up. And we had a look at the Arctic Wolf. We went to the top to see the Wolverines and the little stop off point here with the telescopes. Okay, and then we came round. So this was the indoor wolf area. We got to the off, off show, sorry, not off stage, they're not performers. <laughs> the off show areas for the reindeer. And then this was Fours. I was going to say hammer, but it's not. Fours table, that's it. Not Fours hammer. <laughs> Same thing, different. And then what I was going to do at the end is I want to take a little trip, a little walking trip down this. So this is just like a little scenic route. So I just wanted to have a look down here because there's something at the bottom which I wanted to have a look at. So again, these little curb bins as well, these are really, really cool. So they're just little logs, I think. Yeah, little logs that have been sunken into the ground. So this could be somewhere where you just kind of come off just as like a little woodland walk area. I know quite a lot of zoos in the UK have like little nature reserves. So that could kind of be like this. Um, also as well, just kind of thinking, this could also be like a little water sport area. I don't know if that's something that you'd probably not see at a zoo, because they probably want to protect the lake as much as possible. But it looks like you can kind of hire out like a little canoe and stuff. Um, this would be a really cool area for camping as well. Like it proper reminds me of where me and my friend went. So we stayed at, it's a place called Camping in the Forest up in Glenmore, up in the Cairngorms in Scotland. That is why it was so cold, because there was actually mountains next to us with snow on top. But it was very much like huts kind of thing. And there was like little surf, uh, not surfing, like, um, yeah, windsurfing and other water sports. And you could kind of go out on the lock. And then there was obviously like woods, and then in the woods was our campsite. So yeah, this is really cool. So I can kind of imagine someone like sat here with like a little guitar or something singing songs. Um, what about this as well? This is cool. It's just like a little statue area for the for the animals we've got in the zoo as well. Well, yes, I am very, very impressed. Oh my god, this deck chair is cool. <laughs> very impressed. Let me have a look in here, see if there's anything in here. That's fine. So there's plenty of details, so it won't go, won't go amiss. Okay, so that is about the trees. So that is pretty much the complete tour. Oh my god, this lake is massive. It's like that. <laughs> is that like a dinosaur? I don't know what the, is that a dinosaur? A name of a dinosaur? That is cool though. <clears throat> We've got a little island here. This reminds me of the one of Harry Potter, where um, Dumbledore was buried, where Voldemort goes and gets the wand from. The one that's an actual real life island in Scotland. So this zoo, I must say I'm absolutely blown away by this. The theme in and the detail is absolutely crazy. And I would absolutely love to tour another one of going to zoos because I've really, really enjoyed this. Um, there's so many cool habitats, obviously, I think you know what my <laughs> what my favourite one is. I'll go back over to it. It was this one. The Mute Swan. I'm just absolutely obsessed with this. This is my absolute favourite. The amount of work and detail that's gone into this and the zoo in as a whole is just amazing. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the for the tour that I've done. Um, like I say, I've really, really enjoyed this one. It's a really, really cool zoo. 
So I think I'm going to leave it on that shot there because that is it's quite scenic actually, I quite like that. So thank you so much to Gunter for sending this one over. I will pop all his links and everything down below. He is based in Canada, so he is a Canadian content creator for Planet Zoo. So be sure to check out his series of him building this. If you want to get more inspiration, I'm definitely going to sit through and watch the whole of this series because I've really enjoyed touring this one. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.